In early 2021, Ubisoft announced a large continuation and expansion of the Division universe. This included a number of multimedia additions, such as a mobile game, a novel, new content for The Division 2, and a spin-off called The Division Heartland, a new free-to-play title being developed by Red Storm Entertainment. Since this announcement, there has been radio silence. But over the last few days, we've received an update from the community claiming an exclusive reveal on Heartland, including map details, game modes, and classes. As the name Heartland implies, it will take place in a small town setting rather than the big cities of past games in the series. Silver Creek is a small town on the western side of the state of New York, southwest of Buffalo. The town has a population of less than 3,000 people and is situated on the outside of Lake Erie that separates the Canada-US border. Through the center of town runs two creeks, Silver Creek and Walnut Creek that split off from Lake Erie. Silver Creek is also the New York to Chicago main line of CSX transportation and the New York Buffalo Chicago main line of Norfolk Southern Railway, which means that a lot of freight passes through the region. Heartland has two game modes, Storm and Excursion. Excursion is a PvE mode pitting players against the AI. It has been described as a way to prepare agents for the Storm mode. The description itself says, Explore alongside other friendly agents to prepare the world for the coming Storm. Storm is essentially the same thing, but is PvE VP. Division players should recognize this from the Dark Zone that is present in both the Division and its sequel. Teams are composed of three players, where they can explore, loot, and scavenge the large open world map. The gameplay could be compared to Escape from Tarkov or Hunt Showdown, where the goal is to survive, loot, and extract from Silver Creek to your base of operations. The aim is to earn more powerful gear to take on greater challenges. As there are other players about, these upgrades will help you be better prepared for these encounters. The map is a large open world, where players can explore and find loot dotted throughout. Like the Division, you'll find loot in five different rarities. Grey, green, blue, purple, and gold. There are also SHD beacons that are spread around the map. Players can interact with these and spend resources to unlock upgrades, like virus protection, virus clearance, power-ups, and supply drops. Another feature of the map that is relatively common in these BR-style games is the release of deadly gas around the map. This could be the virus similar to the contaminated areas we find in the base game, or perhaps it could be something like DC-62, which was released in Washington DC. However, rather than spreading from the outside slowly creeping in, these contaminated areas can pop up from anywhere. In order to avoid being downed by this, players can craft gas mask filters in order to survive gas-ridden areas. Much like the Division 1 and 2, there is a base of operations. In Heartland, the base of operations is set up inside an abandoned skating rink. This is the area where you can customize your loadout, matchmake for lobbies, sell previously extracted loot, buy upgrades, and new weapons. This is also the place where you can choose and enable projects and assignments, which will grant players extra experience points per round if successful. Summing up, the Boo is your central hub. It is the area where players will prepare their loadouts and craft upgrades to prepare for the next round of deployment. Some of the options will have a direct effect on the upcoming operation, such as the insertion point, the stash box, buff tower, and extractor pod. At this stage, there are six characters you can choose from, but other than appearance, there is nothing else that really distinguishes their playstyle. However, you will have the option of playing from three different classes. Weapon Expert. The talents include Tracking Shot, where enemies are marked for five seconds after damaging them with a firearm, and Shared Armor Kit, where armor kits repair your armor, as well as nearby teammates. 
Medic. The talents are health recovery, where the health is restored after being in cover for a short time. And Shared Health Kit. That will not only restore your own health, but teammates that are close by. And Survivalist. Whose talents include loot detection, which will highlight nearby unopened crates and shared filter, of which I can only assume has something to do with the gas filter you're wearing and sharing the level of protection you have with the rest of the team, depending on how close they are. I'm pretty late to the party with this video, but I had a few people asking for my thoughts on it. Although I haven't tried my hand at Escape from Tarkov, I'm a big fan of Hunt Showdown, so I'm actually pretty keen to see what this game has in store for us. In all honesty, I don't see this as being something that would interest the majority of the Division players. I've never really thought of The Division as being a game that catered for PvP, and while I can hear The Division PvP creators screaming at me already, even in the best state of PvP in The Division 1, it still felt super awkward. Don't get me wrong, I loved Last Stand, and I spent the majority of my time in the Dark Zone in earlier updates. This was more of a side activity for me, or a way to get gear faster, before they removed the benefits of the high risk, high reward area from the game. The Division Heartland looks to be shaping up as more of a PvP focused game, and in order to help them along with this, and remove some of the balancing issues, a lot of what makes The Division, The Division, is being removed from the game. I'm a PvP player, just not a Division PvP player, so I'm actually looking forward to this. It is a franchise I love, and hopefully a story I can get behind, regardless of how little it may add. Maybe this will be the first PvP introduction that will help land the Division on the map. For those of you not interested in a PvP based Division game, I completely understand. But you need to remember, anything that helps the name grow will be beneficial to the base game in the long run, which will in turn lead to increased support and in future updates. We need to remember that The Division 2 was essentially written off a couple of years ago as being a game that would no longer be updated and supported by the studio. But depending on how these other additions to the franchise go, we could be seeing far more than just the seasons on repeat and the next, potentially last update to the base Division game. However, I won't lie, this is a free to play game. I'm reasonably concerned as to how the marketplace will work. They've done it properly before, but based on recent calls from the higher up Ubisoft executives, I have my doubts. If this becomes a pay to win title, it's dead in the water. Or maybe they'll just add NFTs. Imagine it, you could own Fei Lao's missing eye, or the toys Manny is always complaining about, or Yannick's sweet, sweet beard. Okay, I should probably stop talking about this. Ubisoft might see it and get some ideas. I obviously don't want this to happen, well, maybe apart from Yannick's beard. This, from what I'm reading, has a lot of potential as a PvP game for the Division universe. Other than the obvious teething issues, my main concern is the free-to-play model. So I'll be keeping a close eye on this. Yubi hasn't had the best of track records recently with these models. So I hope we don't just see this burn out and die within 12 months. We haven't actually had any official news come from the studio yet, so perhaps some of these concerns will be addressed. All we know at this point is that we should be seeing Heartland released sometime before March 2023, but if I had to put my money on it, I would say mid-2022. Anyway, I hope you found this informative, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers! <laughs>